Jacob and Kyron Horman's family. The missing boy's stepmother reportedly blindsided by divorce papers that we had talked about yesterday. Those from little Kyron's dad, Kane Horman. He also filed a restraining order and that prevents Terry Horman from having any contact with their 19-month-old daughter. A rather strange development considering dad's response to his marriage during this sit-down interview with his, uh, well, we'll say his wife, or his ex-wife, that is, Desiree Young, the biological mom of Lil Kyron. This was just this last Friday. I wouldn't say it's changed between us. It's just a different dynamic with one of the children not being at the house. All right, we want to be clear. No suspects or arrests have been made in Kyron's disappearance. As always, we take your comments, your questions. You can call us at 1-877-TELL-HLN. Joining us to talk about it, former police officer, former attorney Mark Harold's with us. Also joining us tonight, welcome back, investigative journalist Michelle Sagona. You can check out updates on this story. Hello, Michelle, at michellesagona.com. All right, Michelle, let's... Uh, Let's clear up the timeline of what may went down over the weekend, Michelle. Because uh, from what we gather, and correct me if I go astray here, that there was some intense questioning for stepmom Terry Horman, dad Kane, uh, biological mom Terry, uh, Desiree Young, and then not long after that, a 911 call from the Horman's house. What, what more do we know? That's correct. I did verify with Lieutenant Lynn Strand from the Sheriff's Office that there was a 911 call placed from the family home in Portland, Oregon on Saturday night. As far as the contents or the information inside of that 911 call, we don't know and they will not say, uh, but something definitely happened at the house that night. A call was definitely placed. We do know that Kane and their child together did definitely leave the home. And then on Monday, the divorce paperwork was, was uh, uh, finalized and also the restraining order was sent at a family statement from three of the four parents. So you have Desiree Young, her husband, and Kane, uh, minus Terry mm -hmm. Terry Moulton Horman uh, from that particular statement, and then moving forward with where we are now. Okay. Mark, 911 call we believe is not part of the criminal case, that call from Saturday from the Horman household. What does that tell us? Well, this is just, uh, it's an unusual way to react to this type of missing person. The police aren't saying much about it. Most likely that's because something happened in that 911 tape or that 911 call that can either be used as some type of leverage to get information or it really points them in some new directions that for some reason they don't want to tell the public about. But it's a very unusual situation. The family's not banding together by any means and nobody's been named as a suspect, but there certainly seems to be some emphasis on certain people and there certainly seems to be some estrangement in parts of the family that would indicate that some people in the family think that there's a... Uh, either guilt to go around or at least that it's over on the stepmom. Yeah, exactly. You've been three of the four, three of the four parents have seemed to be banded together, that being biological mom, uh, biological dad, and stepdad. Uh, Michelle, you, you and I talked about it last night, the restraining order being sealed. Yeah. What, what, what more do we know on that front? Well, we know that inside the restraining order, she's not allowed to have contact with her child. Also, that she's not allowed to be near any firearms. Uh, the only thing that was released on that particular restraining order, and I have it in front of me, is just the main cover page, which says, which says that the contents are, in fact, sealed. Also, what was released was the petition for the divorce, which has a little bit more information in it. It says that uh, that they were married in April 2007 in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. It also states that Kane is seeking sole custody of their daughter and that he's also seeking child support uh, within that particular petition. So we have a little bit of information in there, but as far as the restraining order contents, uh, you know, there must have been something that he brought to the table that would force a judge to be able to move forward with that because any judge that makes an order uh, for a, a young child to be away from their mother for a certain period amount of time there's something serious going on there okay mark let's talk about that first off how unusual is it for a restraining order to be sealed well it's not completely unusual when there's a context of a criminal case or a missing person something like this uh you know usually they're not sealed but in this case i completely agree there's something in there that mm. the judge took into account and decided just like was said, to issue a restraining order against a young child from their mother. So there's something in there, but again, they want to seal it. I think that there's some information the police want. They don't want out because they either want to use it in the future when they're uh, performing questioning or it's led them in new directions and they don't want anybody to get wise that they're coming to talk to them. Yeah, and to, to Michelle's point, to, to take a mom away from a 19-month-old little girl, there's got to be something huge in there. You've got to prove something pretty serious to get that type of restraining order, right, Mark? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got to have something in there. This isn't just a deal where somebody came in and said they'd rather her not be near her child. They have to have some concrete evidence that this judge decided was credible enough to keep this uh, young child away from her mother. So I agree. There's something in there, and we don't know what it is. Okay, we're going to continue our conversation. Where is little Kyron? That is the question still as we see the family dynamic changing. We'll take your calls as always. 1-877-TELL-HLN.